and today we're going to talk about things to do while visiting Manila, Philippines. Let's do it. First up on the list is Intramuros here in Old Town, Manila. This was originally established by the Spanish dating back to the 1500s. Then the Japanese took this area and then the Americans after World War II took it back and now it's currently a historical park for those of you who want to come visit this part of Manila's history. You will notice that there is a golf course that goes around the area of Intramuros and that was actually put in after World War II, covering up the moat that served as a fortification barrier of entry, protecting the fort. And as we continue to show you around Manila here, I wanna remind you guys that if you check the description below, you will find timestamps so you can bounce around from location to location. Very close to Intramuros is Fort Santiago. Sitting here at the mouth of the Pasig River, it served as the premier defense fortress for the Spanish government while they controlled the country of the Philippines. An interesting fact about this fort here, it served as the prison for the national hero, Jose Rizal, who was executed in 1896. Nearby is the Jose Rizal Museum and the Jose Rizal Park. You will see in many of the municipalities and provinces across Philippines a Jose Rizal statue in front of the city halls or the government buildings. And while here at Fort Santiago, you'll be able to walk through some of the prison areas where the actual prisoners were held. In case you're wondering what Jose Rizal's alleged crime was, it was rebellion which later led to the Philippine Revolution breaking out. Now we're headed over to Chinatown known as Binondo. It is the oldest Chinatown in the world and the most visited towns in the Philippine capital city of Manila. Chinatown here in Manila is actually known for its food. So if you're down here and you wanna try some street food or any sort of unique cuisine, that's what's the main attraction here. It is quite crowded and it might not be for everybody. So do a little bit of research on Chinatown on TripAdvisor or read some of the blogs that write up about this location. For me, I found it very interesting and I did try some of the food while here. Just some quick history about Manila's Chinatown. It's more than 400 years old and it was established in 1594 as a permanent settlement for the Chinese Catholic immigrants here in Manila. I ended up taking a trike from Intramuros over here to Chinatown and we went over the Pasig River. It took around 10 to 15 minutes because of traffic, but it could be a little bit faster depending on the time of day. Now here we are at San Augustine Church. This was completed in 1607. It is the oldest stone church in the country. This is not to be confused with the Manila Cathedral Basilica, which we will be showing you a bit later on in the film. In case you're wondering what the largest church in the Philippines is, it's Tall Basilica near Tall Volcano, which is an area we will be showing you a little bit later on in the film. Also, if you plan to visit the Philippines, check the link description below because there are several more videos we are making from across the country. Now here we are at the Venice Canal Shops. While walking around here, you'll notice that there is a gondola and many boats that you can ride going around the mall and the shops, similar to what you would find at the Venetian in Las Vegas or Macau. While here, you'll notice that it's an outdoor venue with many different shops on two different levels, located nearby the ritzy area of Manila known as BGC, Buena Facio Global City. Now, while here in BGC, you can also walk around High Street. Now, this is an area where they're gonna have many different restaurants. It's very popular with people who are looking for outdoor activities such as shopping, hanging out at cafes, going to restaurants with bars, or just relaxing in the park right in the middle of High Street. When you visit BGC, you'll notice that the prices of hotels are gonna be more expensive than they are even in Makati or other parts of Manila because it is really the ritzy business central area. Another ritzy area is gonna be Manila Seaside right here along Manila Bay. Walking along the waterfront is popular as well as going towards the amusement park. This one is called SM by the Bay. Here they have a large Ferris wheel as well as a variety of different kiddie rides and games for the whole family where you can try and win a teddy bear or something for your girlfriend even. Prices do vary for the rides. For example, the Dream Twister is 100 pesos. That's two US dollars, right? So if you wanted to do the drop tower, that's 100 pesos. They have the bumper car, which is 60 pesos, the pirate ship, which is really exhilarating ride. That's 100 pesos. So just depending on what you're going to do, you pay per ride. 
And right next to the amusement park is SM Mall of Asia. This is actually the largest shopping mall in all of the Philippines and certainly right here in Manila. So if you wanna to go to a mega mall, this is the one you're gonna to come to. While here, I actually stayed at the Conrad Hotel, which is very close to both of these. I'm not saying you'll wanna stay at that hotel because it is a bit expensive. I used my Hilton Honors points to get that room but I found that to be a convenient hotel for those of you who do have reward points. Now let's talk about nightlife here in Manila. This is a bit of a tricky subject because depending on who you ask, you'll get different answers. But for the most part, people will tell you Makati. And then even depending on what hotel you're at, they'll tell you Poblacion. So Poblacion is basically the party area where there's bars but it's a bit of a seedy area if you know what I'm saying, so keep that in mind. If you're looking for a more high-end nightlife experience, consider going to BGC in places like Forbes Town, which we will be showing you a little later on, but it's gonna be the daytime experience at Forbes Town. The area you're looking at right here is called Pete Burgos here in Poblacion, which is in Makati. Now around here, you're gonna find cheaper hotels as well, which is going to be a relief from BGC and even though it's about two kilometers away from BGC it still takes about a half hour to get here from BGC by the way now which leads me to something I'd like to point out driving in Manila is very congested and it does take a long time to go several kilometers something that should take only maybe 10 minutes takes a half hour Next up is Tall Volcano, and this one is actually active sitting right here along the lake. It's about an hour away from Manila. It is a unique natural beauty. Next up, we're headed to City of Dreams. This here is a casino and gaming area where they have multiple different hotels, including the Hyatt Regency. They also have some high-end restaurants here like Wolfgang Puck and the DreamWork Dreamplay for the kids. So if you like good food, casinos, and chilling out with the family in a little bit more of a ritzy area, again, City of Dreams might be for you. Now here's a look at Forbes Town, but this time it's gonna be in the daytime. Like I said, this is a place you may wanna check out in the evening time. You're gonna find high-end restaurants and cafes like a Tim Hortons, for example, which is something you'd find in Canada, right here in Manila. They also have many different restaurants that may be interesting for you. So again, Forbes Town right here in BGC could be a solution for some of you who are looking for a high-end experience in Manila. And the reason I keep going back to BGC with a lot of this commentary is because this is an area you can get around without congestion. Now getting here, you're gonna experience congestion, but once you're here, it's not as congested and crazy as you would get around the rest of the city. And just walking around BGC in general is what I'm doing here, showing you what the rest of BGC is. There's got condos here where you may be able to get a rental for an Airbnb. They also have the Grand Hyatt nearby several other hotels, but really the best area to be is BGC. You can see it looks like Singapore right here, which I have noticed comes as a bit of a surprise for foreigners who come here thinking that Manila is full of traffic jams and congestion. So when they come out here, they're like, wow, I didn't expect this awesome area inside of Manila. So yes, BGC, add that to your list of places to really hang out for those of you who want to avoid the congestion but it's gonna come at a price, right? It's expensive here. I found it to be easy to walk around, but if you wanted to take one of these rental scooters to go around or rent a bike, you can do that. Also, there's gonna be plenty of taxis and they have Grab readily available, so download that app. Now we're over here doing a Manila haircut style. I like to get my haircut here in Manila with one of these local guys who know what they're doing with the switchblade and know how to trim it, line it up, really nicely so if you want a good treatment for a fair price get your hair cut and line up with some nice shampoo and conditioner and walk away feeling fresh and clean as you go around Manila streets this haircut service I got was at Big Boss Barber right here at Venice Canal shops in case you're wondering so we got some adobo and some lumpia so the adobo definitely tastes like it's a uh, pork doesn't taste like a chicken. Okay, so I got some prawn tacos here. What is this called? This is... Okay, let's say that. Lumpia. Look at this. 
Lumpia, Shanghai. A popular delicacy here is actually called baloo. This is actually a duck that's almost about ready to hatch and you eat it. The baby duck. It's a baby duck? Yeah. But what's the name? Quail? Quail, yeah. What does it look like inside? I know, boiled egg, mini boiled egg. Mini boiled egg, show us, show. Half, eat half. Oh, this tastes good, huh? Yeah. Wagyu and garlic, carbonara, spaghetti. Ah, yes. Thank you, sir. For those of you who do plan to stay in BGC, maybe you consider checking out Mini Park, which is right here in BGC Village but it gives you an idea of what life is like inside of much of Manila without actually having to go too far in a car to see what the rest of Manila is like. So this place like Mini Park, kind of cool. It's right next to the Bonifacio Memorial right there, so you could probably get both. And then you can head over to the SM Aura Premier Mall. As you've probably noticed, some of the most interesting things you'll do while visiting Manila is going to these malls. And it's also a great way to beat the humidity and the heat in these modern malls that they have all across Makati, BGC, and the Manila Seaside area. Speaking of Manila Seaside area, we're going to go over to Newport World Resort. This is similar to City of Dreams where they have several different resorts like the Sheraton, the Marriott, as well as the Hilton. And then they have, of course, the casinos with a mall right next door. It used to be called Resorts World, but now it's renamed. Newport World Resort. This area is just around the mall where you'll see all these crazy lighting exhibits. From Newport World Resort, let's go back towards the Intramuros area. This here is the Mininella Cathedral. For those of you who like to study the history or of the Spanish settlements in the area, then come over here and check out this beautiful cathedral. And that's going to do it for this episode of Manila. Best things to do. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more videos from our channel, you can watch our best things to do in Taipei next or our best things to do in Hong Kong by clicking one of those videos right here. Thank you to all of our subscribers and channel members.